Good to see Moulin Rouge at the Kennedy Center. So excited! To give Yvette Gonzalez Nasser my painting. She's such an inspiration. What surprised me as I approached the Kennedy Center was how elegant and minimal the exterior of the building was without looking sterile and cold. Part of it was that the text on the exterior was so clear and easy to read, but a big part of it was probably these tall poles, which seemed so elegant, which seemed to almost have this grace to them because they were so little there. And so when you come upon the gigantic Moulin Rouge banner, it really feels startling with its rich, sumptuous reds. Painting and architecture often feel like they are so different from each other. Many people associate architecture with precise measuring, clear, distinctive shapes, accuracy, and straight lines. So how do you put that together with painting, which is oftentimes about fluidity, organic forms, and a looseness in terms of the articulation. Where does painting meet architecture? A lot of artists feel pressure when they are drawing or painting architecture that everything has to be accurate and measured. I don't even bother trying to get anything remotely accurate. I don't measure anything because ultimately what this really comes down to is capturing the atmosphere of the space. What really strikes me the most about this architecture is just this extreme height that you see projected down every single hallway. When I'm in this space, there's such an extreme sense of height that I keep wanting to look up. It's like that ceiling is beckoning me somehow. This is the time when I'm walking in an architectural space, I'm just looking at my eye level but I keep <laughs> craning my neck so I can see that verticality of the space. These are probably the tallest chandeliers I've ever seen. And it's perfectly suited to the architecture because the length and height of the chandeliers really fits the extreme verticality of the building. When I paint a site, I always ask myself, what is the part of the site that I noticed the most? For me, it was the way that these bold red stairs just spilled outwards towards the lower right-hand corner and these beautiful curved edges of the various levels of the Opera House. I'm really deliberate about what I choose to emphasize. Just because something is there, it doesn't mean you have to draw it or even to a full detailed degree. These railings that are on the staircases towards the bottom, they're much more prominent in front of the stairs, but as you move over to the right edge of the painting, you'll see just a couple light stray marks to indicate that there are more railings in the background. Some people think a lot about math and measuring when it comes to architecture, and certainly it is all those things, but I think the architecture that really has influence is architecture that really creates an emotional impact. This space, it's so majestic. I'm not a queen, but I feel like one walking down these hallways. It has that emotional influence on you. I'm drawing with Tombow water-based brush pens on cold-pressed watercolor paper, and I also have a water brush, which is super convenient when I'm drawing on site because it has a little container in the back where you can squeeze water into the brush. In my technique, the water brush really is the glue that keeps the architecture cohesive. I'll oftentimes put down a marker stroke, which is very confident and sticks out a lot, but then the water brush is a way for me to really soften the presence of that mark so it sinks more into the painting itself. When you have an edge of the architecture that's a little bit blurred or perhaps lower in contrast, that makes it easier for us to move from form to form without feeling like the architecture is just cutting up 
the entire scene with a bunch of clear cut shapes. I always get a little nervous when I go to a space and I'm not really sure what's going to be available. I had reserved myself to drawing the exterior of the building, but the whole center was open. They had all these other events going on and it was great. <laughs> I could just sit for hours. It really worked out well. It's not always the case. A lot of people ask me how I implement colors into my paintings that are not actually present in the space. An example would be these cool strokes of blue on the right hand side of the painting. That blue is a reaction to what's happening with that hot, sumptuous, reddish magenta that's at the bottom for the staircase. The reasoning here is that the red is extremely intense. It's also a very warm color. And so I need something that is perhaps lower in value a really exciting thing about painting architecture is the incredible range of scale that you get to portray. We have these large curved levels of the opera house, but at the same time, things like these gold trash cans that were at the bottom of the staircase feel just as important. I want people to look at this painting and feel like they can explore the space with me, that they can wander around a column, that they can walk up that little set of stairs, and then look up and see these glorious chandeliers. These lights that are throughout the opera house, they really feel like these little jewels that are hanging within the space. The space was elegant and beautiful, but it was also incredibly warm. And that's one of the reasons that I emphasize that pink so much because I wanted people to feel how sumptuous the space was. You know when I'm painting that I'm gonna get stuck somewhere with nothing to eat. So I always bring minimum two meals with me. I was so fascinated by these pockets of space that you see throughout the various levels of the opera house. On every part of the opera house, there are these lights. And I imagined that feeling when you enter a theater and you go through this meandering dark hallway. And then as you enter the theater, it's this spectacular feeling of entering this majestic space. And so I really wanted to capture through some of these open doors, some of these darker spaces, that feeling of entering that mysterious darkness that just leads you into this incredible spectacle. I found myself so mesmerized by the rich, deep red in the stairs. To really push the color further, I did far more layers in the stairs than in any other part of the painting. What's great about these brush pens is that it's surprising how much you can layer and achieve variations of value with those layers. Some of the medium dark values in the red are simply me drawing over and over and over again with the brush pens in the same spot. Certainly I brought in some browns to get the really dark values, but it's incredible what you can do with a single red marker in this area then it's a matter of creating a back and forth process where you throw down a color with the marker, you loosen it with the water brush and repeat that process over and over again. The marks did get a little wild, probably more than I initially intended, but I did like that contrast against the architecture of the opera house, which felt very clean and articulate. In general, I don't tend to do a lot of details when I paint. I know a lot of people look for details as a means to really dazzle an audience. But for me, if I get too focused on articulating details throughout an architectural space, I really lose a feeling of cohesion of the space in terms of how I'm thinking about it. Even things like the text in the large banner really didn't feel that important within the scheme of things. That's the challenge of this architectural space. There's just so many components and trying to figure out how to balance them all without being overwhelming in the painting is difficult. And so if everything is to a lower degree of detail, 
it makes it a lot easier for the various parts to flow into each other. I do sometimes wonder, though, whether my lack of details in my paintings makes the painting too difficult to understand. But if you think about architecture, it really is a series of shapes and forms interacting within a space, which is a quite abstract concept if you think about it. It's not like you're painting a pear and people need to know that it's a pear. To me, as long as you are creating depth, that is ultimately what painting architecture is all about. And those little details are so cosmetic that they oftentimes do not impact the feeling of depth within a painting of architecture. When I paint on site, I do sometimes do additional work on the painting after I've left the site. But when you're painting a space like this that's so grand, it just feels like such a letdown to paint from a reference photo of the site. It minimizes that sense of grandeur that I experience so palpably in this space. And that's when I leave the painting wherever it is when I leave. I don't know that it really feels finished as much as it does capture that moment in time. And where I end up is simply that. And the end of the story is that I got to give my painting to Yvette Gonzalez-Nasser at the stage door.